Hello. Thank you for the purchase. Now I'm going to show you the structure of this powerful template and how you can use it to animate your photo. On the right button here, you can double click it. Copy this link and make sure that you register this product so that you can get the best of customer support, all future updates and exclusive giveaways. And now we can go in, enter project. You're going to find all the scenes here that you can use to animate your photo. So you can choose any of the scenes here depending on the kind of photo you want to animate. Let me zoom in here. Surroundings will enable you to animate any kind of photo except you won't be able to animate the cloud or water or grass. So surroundings keeps it simple. Just animate the photo and create depth. Surroundings is also the main call for projecting all the scenes in Motionverse. Now if you want to animate more complex photos, you have something like Vista here. So with Vista, you can animate the cloud and water. Now what if you want to animate a more complex water scene? Now that's where Seascape comes in. Right here. With over water, you can animate your water scenes and create realistic 3D animation. And if you want to create an underwater, if you want to turn your photo, into an underwater scene, you use underwater here. What if you have a grass field, a beautiful scenery, and you want to animate that? That's where a field comes in. You can animate your nature. And what if you have some particles, or you have like a water trail, and you want to animate that? Now that's where element trail comes in. For today's tutorial, we're going to start with surroundings and then I'm going to show you the structure of motion verse and from there we're going to use Vista to animate our cloud. Let's begin. So I'm going to zoom out here then I'm going to double click surroundings. So this is the surroundings comp which is the main projector for motion verse. So here on the left you find all the folders here. Here you can place your own files to keep things clean. And let me show you something here. These are the placeholders for your main photo here, for your clean plate and for objects. And here you have the depth map where you can place or generate your depth map. You have this one for setting up the grid. You have this for the animation. You have this here for adding particles. And this is the FX bank where you will find several effects that are included here. There are two ways to use the FX bank. When you select, you will find the special effects included. Another way to use FS Bank is to double click and you will find other features here. This is volumetric for adding 3D volumetric lights. And here we have Flame, another powerful VFX tool inside Motionverse. As you can see, it is very easy to navigate with the help of our UI. Any comp you're going to use has its own UI, making it easy for you to navigate and place anything you need to place in any comp. You don't need to start going to different folders here to find what you're looking for. Our UI has made it easy. Okay, let me show you. We're not going to import our photo. So you can right click here, import and bring in your photo or double click here. But the best part is just to drag it and drop. 
So I place the photo inside the all files folder. Great. Then we're going to place it in the placeholder for the image. I'm going to double click this UI here. I'm going to drag and drop. Okay, we can scale down. And then move the position. Okay, great. Now we need to cut out this individual here. So I'm going to select this image layer here. Go to edit. Then I'm going to copy it. I'll close this comp here. I'm going to place the copied photo inside any of these objects placeholders. So I'm going to place it in object zero. That is the foreground here. Double click that. I'm going to select this layer here and then paste the file. And when I show you how you can cut out the image in After Effects. You can select pen tool and start to create mask path. Done. It is now time to clone out the object from the photo. So go to clean plate placeholder here, open it. You can then drag and drop your photo here. Normally what you do is double click this layer here. And then select the stamp tool. Okay. And then you can alt or option. And then you can start to clone. Okay, I'm just going to increase the opacity here. And then you clone. So, but what if inside motion verse there is another way, a better way to clone out your object? Let me show you. I'm going to close this and I'm going to hide this layer here. I'm going to enable our cloner here. So I'm going to hide this tab and then hide the layer that we added which we don't need. And then you're going to find these six boxes here. Let me show you how to use it. So I'm going to hide the boxes that I don't need for this tutorial. So for this photo, I'm going to use box or mask 2 and mask 5. And I'm also going to optimize the speed. The next thing now is to go in and clone out the object. So I'm going to use the settings of mask 2 to clone it out. So why this process is better than stamping? is because when you stamp, you lose some of the details because of the edges of the brush you're using. But with this process, you can retain the details of the photo. We can now open the settings of Mask 5 and make some changes there too. You can see that the area that is being cloned is just that of the subject. That's amazing. Now we're going to refine the edges of the cloned area. You can still go back and adjust any of the cloned area. It is procedural. That means you can go back and forth and make any adjustments.
As you can see, the extracted area has been cloned. What if you want to use Photoshop to extract the object and also clone the background? Let me show you how you can do that. We go to our Photoshop here. I'm going to open this folder in Photoshop. Okay, now we're going to extract this object here, or subject. So I'm going to use pen tool to extract it. So I'm going to make selection of the mask path, then duplicate the layer and apply the mask. The next thing I'm going to do now is to extract the image from the mask. So I will select the mask, right click here and apply layer mask. The next thing now is to remove these areas too. I make selection. And just enter like 1 or 0 and I'll press delete to remove that area and I'm going to press command D or control D to deselect and I'll do the same here make selection delete and control or command D to deselect and we have one more here Great, and deselect. So we have done the extraction now. We're not going to clone the background. So what I'm going to do is to hold down my control or command and click here to make a selection. Go to select, modify, expand, you can enter like three here and click delete going to hide the background. We're not going to apply content aware. So we go to edit, fill, content aware and press OK. And then you can press Ctrl D to deselect. Much better. Now you can select the stamp too, just like in After Effects and hold down Alt to sample a material or texture or detail from another side and you can now start to fix the edges. You can increase the brush size by pressing the bracket keys and we can just uh, modify some areas here. I just like to reduce my opacity like make it 50. Okay, and we can also increase the brush size and we can do like big stamp here. So it blends everything together. Now we have our plate ready. So this is the main photo plate object. I'm going to now show you how to create depth map in Photoshop. So depth map is what drives the 3D depth in After Effects. So the brightest of colors like white is what that is nearer to the camera and the darkest black is farther away from the camera. So we can create a new layer here. We can select brush and we can use 
um, hard brush for now and you can change this to white and start to paint for instance I want the ones here to be brighter and I want the one here to be a bit darker so to get a more accurate result I'm going to select here my uh, my plate and I'm going to use selection tool here I'm going to hide all this and I'm going to make selection of this rock just like that and then I'm going to go to my brush layer and I will start to paint so I'm going to paint something this bright here all right something this bright here and then I'm going to change the color here is something a bit dark increase the brush and then I'm going to maybe like create a new layer here underneath and then just paint that way okay and then I'm going to deselect select my plate again hide these layers and I'll make a selection of this side and also that and I'm going to make this visible I'm going to select this white um, layer and I'm going to paint white also white here for the top then I'm going to paint something darker with a darker color here so uh, I'll just create a new layer underneath and then I'm going to do that here and probably uh, paint here and go to the white layer and change this to white and paint so I'm going to paint something much darker here this is for you to get a much better result um, when you paint them this way okay so we can follow this process to paint the rest so these ones here are much closer to the camera now I'm going to select um, deselect hide these layers here select my uh, quick selection tool here and I'm going to make a selection of this one here with our selection I can add a solid color like that so I still have my other depth map here and I'm going to do the same uh, I'm going to uh, make selection here also to be the same color this grass here Okay, uh, perfect. So here I'm just going to delete this mask and add a new mask. So we have something like this here. And I'm going to also um, select the one at the back. This one here. Alright, and I'm going to make this visible here. Then add solid color like that there and then I'm going to add another solid color which is going to be black 
I'm going to group it. You hold on your shift, select this one and drag and drop this icon here and it's grouped. So this is our depth map here. You can go ahead and, and press Ctrl or Command E to merge. So you can call this depth map. Looking great. So we have all we need to make our animation now. So we can save this file. We can call this file um, um, 3D 3D file. Okay, and then just press save. So you have all the files you need here for our animation. And I'm going to go back to After Effects. I'm going to, this is the files here. You're going to drag it and place it in your files folder. And here to see merge layers, nope. You're going to um, select composition and click OK. So you're going to find all the files here if you open this comp you will find what we created here. So perfect. What we're going to do, we have our objects here. We have our clean plate. So, and then we have our depth map. So this is how you can create these things inside Photoshop. Now to go for our depth map, we're going to double click that. This is a section for our depth map. So here you will see import. Double click that and you're going to place your imported depth map. And you can resize. Then bring it up. So to match our scale in here, because the way we scale this one is different. To match that, I'm going to go for the position and scale. And I'm going to copy my scale here. I'm going to go for scale here. Now place it. I'm going to copy my position here. And paste my position too. So that it matches the way we scaled this photo. Great, so now I'm going to close this depth map comp and I'm going to select this here. I'm going to sorry. You make sure that nothing is selected here. I'm going to select this UI here for settings. And I'm going to enable my imported depth map. So what if you want a much faster way to generate depth maps inside After Effects? Actually, there is. Motionverse has depth map engine that will generate depth map for you. Let me show you. I'm going to disable this one here. So we have Z depth and we have XY depth. So if we zoom in here, so Z depth is good for hall, alley, road, and so on, like playing grounds. And then XY is good for bumpy grounds, like landscape and terrain and the rest of it. The photo we are using here is that uh, of a landscape. So we're going to go ahead and use XY. So if I select this UI here, I'm going to make sure that nothing is selected. Select XY depth. Enable. So. We have our settings here. For this, I'm going to go to light pan so I can place more light on this area here. So I'm going to pan my light. Look at that. And I'm going to just turn down the brightness again. Our depth map engines gives you a better result. It analyzes your photos and presents you with the best depth map that you will need. 
check this out all here for you without painting anything without brushing anything and you have an engine that can generate depth map for you so what if you're using a different kind of photo like like a, like a plain ground photo let me show you the power of our depth map engine I'm going to use a different photo now so let's go to editor here I'll place it here in main photo so I'm going to use this photo I'll just drag it and place it in your files folder it keeps things clean I'm going to drag this and place it here and I'm going to transform Fitcom. so this is just for an example these two photos are different and now watch what this depth map is going to do how it will generate depth map Z depth map for this photo let's go to our 3d depth map here you're going to select our XY we're going to disable that we're going to select our Z depth and enable it and because we are still using the photo in our clean plate let me just select my animator here and I'm going to change the source image to go to display source image from plate to main okay and now it's going to update here in our depth map and look at that we have depth map now for this photo and we can do the same thing we have our settings here so for the Z depth you have also 3D light and 2D light we have our global light just like the X and Y okay and then we have our defining light just like the pan light in X and Y so bright and then we can turn down the shade here and another awesome feature here is pale shading when you click that check this out and then we can increase our defining light here or we can increase our real light intensity here amazing all inside after effects as you can see with our depth map engine you can generate a more soothing depth map for your images let me tell you how useful this is let's say that you're into 3d modeling people need this kind of tool to generate like depth map for their scenes it's so powerful you'll be able to generate these things all inside after effects using motion verse to export depth map you can select these settings here settings UI and you can lock this and hide UI you can then go ahead here in composition save frame as far here and you can change this to best full okay choose your destination and then render it out and you can go back to 3d depth here uncheck that click import and then you can place the new depth map here so what if you want to use masking to generate depth maps let me show you how you can do it here I'm going to unlock this now I'm going to select Z depth and disable it and I'm going to go back to my settings UI and I'll go to mask depth enable so we're not going to use this photo it was just for an example here so I'm going to go back to my editor and then open my main and disable that okay and I'm going to select my animator here and change my source image back to plate and I'm going to go to my 3d depth here so you can see these four layers here nearer mask near far and farther so i'm going to select the nearer mask and we can add mask for the depth map so first i'm going to uh, select um settings ui here i'm going to lock it i'm going to hide ui 
select my narrow mask again select pen tool and we can start the masking and to zoom in here So we're done with our narrow mask. Now we're going to add mask from there. So I'm going to add mask here. Great. Now I'm going to add mask to far. So you can make it nearer to your selection or you can make it a bit farther away like I'm doing like this here. So I'm going to go ahead to select all these parts. And this one is for far and then this is going to be for the farther. I'm going to make selection here and I'm going to close that here so we have all our four masks done now going to activate mask and then we're going to go to the farthest and enable it awesome look at that so we have our depth map generated now and you can go to adjustments you have like the radio you can enable that so this will change the edges of the mask like that okay from linear to radio like that and of course you can go to the radio amount and you can adjust that so I'm just gonna use the linear for now. And you can soften details here. Okay, and you can even increase it further. So I'm just going to leave it at maybe 20 here. Sorry about, yeah, something like that here. And you can go in of course and adjust the details for each of the mask so you have the linear details here you can increase add more details you can look at that you can adjust the gradient okay the opacity of the gradient here you can adjust the angle looking great so if you want to generate depth map through masking you can do that here and let's go back I want to show you something else before you start using the depth map for the X Y and Z so I'm going to disable this here and I'm going to and remove the activation for this and I'm going to show you uh, unlock that enable Z depth so when you are done so I'm going to use the XY because I'm using a different folder now. So when you're done here, you can see fast smoothness or pro. You can activate fast depending on the speed of your computer. And look at the details of the pro. Look at that. So you can choose which one you want. When you're happy with the result, you can then proceed with the animation so you have the, the Z depth generator X and Y you have the one that we imported I'm going to hide this now you have the one that we imported from Photoshop and also you have the one here we did through masking I'm going to put this back let's say 50 here let me show you something about mesh because Motionverse also has 
mesh generator. Isn't that awesome? Let me show you. So here, I'll go to my animator here. And I'm going to enable my depth map. And I'm going to go to 3D scan and mesh. I'll go to my 3D scan here. So I want to generate the mesh for the plate. So I'm going to minimize uh, my UI here. So here I'm going to select, I want to generate mesh for the scene here and enable. And then I'm going to go to my mesh here, mesh complexity. Now it is this way because we have not made some selection. We're going to go to our selection here for the depth map. We're going to choose X, Y and Z depth generator here which gives me a better result here. So if I make this to be full, so check out the result. So check out the result here. Amazing. You can change the color to something brighter. You have the mesh here. Isn't that amazing? That's in motion verse, you can generate mesh. You can choose if you want it simpler or more complex. Simpler here. More complex. And here, if you go to mesh settings, Here, not right now, if you go there, you can control the amount of mesh count. If you want the lines to be larger, the spacing between the lines to be larger, you can reduce that. If you want the spacing to be thinner, you can increase that. So that's amazing that you can do all these things inside Motionverse. So if you're a VFX artist and you want to show off your work, you can use our mesh generator to show off your work. And in a different tutorial, I'm going to show you how to enable scanner. This is how it looks like when you apply scanner to your photo. Let us test out our depth map. I'm going to disable my scanner and mesh. I'm going to lower the resolution here going to zoom out, close this, so I'm going to go to depth map here, open refine mask, and then X and Y, so I'm just going to show you something here, you can test that and also animate your photo here, using the increase Y and X, depth, if you want to animate the cloud, you can use either vista, over water, or field. But since our photo doesn't have water, we're going to use Vista to animate the cloud. Let me show you how. Double click Vista and now select this UI here. Let's enable our scene. Great, so the thing we're going to do now is to extract this structure here which will be in front of the cloud. To start the extraction, you have to double click this UI here. I'm going to move this up a bit. Select this UI, open it, and you can choose photo templates. Then go to import. So what you normally would do is to place your photo inside this placeholder here. Okay, I'm going to scale it down. Normally what you do inside After Effects to extract an image is to use like the pen tool or roto brush to make the extraction here. You know, stuff like that.
or you can place your already extracted image here. When you're done, you go back to the extractor here and you can see the image. Now what if Motionverse can offer you another great option whereby you can extract using our extraction engine. So I'm going to select custom extractor here and I'm going to use it to extract this image. Let me show you. Let's go to extraction. Custom extractor. You'll find highlight area, dark area. So highlight area for the sky, dark area for the structure. You can now start to move the sliders for the extraction. And you can check out the channels to see which one best extract the image. Channel 2, Channel 3, Channel 1. So for this photo, Channel 2 gives us the best results. Now what we are going to do is to remove this remaining area. So I'm going to select Subtract Mask. Select my Paint tool here. And I'm going to create mask to remove this area for the cloud. So here we go. Done. Now I'm going to deselect and select my UI again. And I'm going to go to subtract mask. Activate. And we are done with the extraction. Isn't that amazing that you get to do all these things inside Motionverse without needing to go to Photoshop to get it done? The next thing we are going to do now is to extract our cloud using this extraction that we have already done here. So I'm going to go ahead and close this comp and close that too and we are back to our vista here. Then go to cloud, select the UI here and enable cloud. We're going to go to templates. We're going to go to photo template here. So if you already have photo of a cloud, you can use use your photo here by double clicking the import button and then place it here. Drag and drop. And then you can enable use your photos here. But if you don't have any photo for your cloud, you can use the inbuilt cloud photos here. Use template. Enable that. And you can choose from our 14. So 14.7 here and also the dark version. Dark light version here. So you can choose and use any of our clouds here. We also have custom template here which also has an engine for extracting your cloud. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use our scene template here. I'm going to enable it. And I'm going to choose structure. Perfect. Now we'll have to clone to add more details here, which is very essential for the animation. I'm going to activate cloning. And I'm going to use the clone position to move this down here. And then you can go to refine mask. And you can refine it. So I'm going to just to feather that. And I'm going to brighten it up a bit. They're looking great. Now we are done with cloning our cloud. You can now go to additional display and you can show the foreground photo for guide as you animate. Before we proceed with the cloud animation, what if there's a Photoshop template that will enable you to export all the files you need for your animation to After Effects with a single click Photoshop action. Can you imagine the amount of time you can save without needing to be the one to drag and drop all the files inside the placeholders 
for each of the elements you want to use. Editing in Photoshop is usually very fast and even more so if you have a template that will enable you to export the files in a single click. You can now just go straight ahead to start the animation. Actually, there is such a file here which is prepared for you that you can edit inside Photoshop and play the action that will export all the files for you to Motionverse AE. It is that simple. It's fast. It saves time. It's convenient. Let me show you how. So here we have a bunch of layers. We have our plate here. We have our cloud. We have the structure on top. Then we have one balloon. Another air balloon here. And we have this guy. We have this front rock. And then we have other elements here. So imagine bringing this all inside motion verse and then placing them individually on the placeholders. In After Effects, when you place an image inside a comb, you will not expect it to be there. It will be at the center, which can be very challenging because you will need to reposition that object back to the original state you want it to be. With this in setup template that we added for motion verse, there is a tactical measure that we placed in this template that will maintain the position of your objects. It will stay where you place them. It will not move when you open it in After Effects. We recommend using this template if you are working on a very complex scene. Now let me show you how to use our scene setup template. You can open the Photoshop file and you will find the main photo here, clean plate, you will find the objects and you will find the cutout elements here. You can place the cloud, field, water, structure, grass and other elements. So to use it, you can go back to your Photoshop file where you extracted and cloned the environment and the cloud. So we're going to drag and drop inside this template here. And then we're going to group it, drag and drop and group. You're going to scale it down right here. You can hold down your shift and alt as you scale. Perfect. Alright, about here. And then you're going to start placing them. So right here, I can place, I can just drag that folder and place it inside clean plate here. And the next thing I'm going to do is to drag the cloud and place it inside the cloud folder. Then I'm going to drag the structure extract and place it inside the structure folder here. Then I'm going to drag my object, object 5 here, object 4 there, object 3, object 2, object 1 and object 0. I can then delete or ungroup it. So I'm just going to bring this down so it doesn't go off the size of the comp. Perfect. Now if you want to add depth map, you can enable, make this folder visible and you can now paint inside here. So you have the closest, which is the brightest of colors, white. And then you have fathers here, dark gray. So you can just select brush, your brush tool here, make white your foreground, and then you can start to paint in those areas. Another thing you can do also is let me just hide this here. So let me give you a tip when it comes to painting depth map. So if you have any like extracted area, let's say this object here, and you want to paint. And during painting, you don't want to go overboard. 
you can hold down Ctrl or Command to make selection around that area. Now you can go to your depth map. So I want here a bit darker, so I'm going to use something like maybe like Simifar here. And I'm going to select my brush then, increase the brush size, make sure white is the foreground color. And then I can paint here. Okay, and then I want here to be much brighter. I can go to the closest here, and then I can paint that as well. So make sure that your brush is 100% when you paint. Great. So I have this here. And then I will just want to to paint here with 100% brush opacity here. And I can paint a little darker shade here. You see everything is maintained within the area of selection. I'm going to go ahead now to play the action to export all these files for me. I'm going to go to motion via setup. AE export and I'm going to play the action. Okay, the action is done and now we're going to save the file. So you're going to locate where you saved the motion verse folder, go to template AE, go to footage here, reference images and just click save. Yes. And now we're going to go back to After Effects. It's going to update everything. Look at that. The update is done automatically. How do we know that? Let's go to our editor here. Click the animator here. I'm going to go to my depth map. And I'm going to go to view map. Enable view map here. And I'm going to select Photoshop D map. Look at that. Amazing. Now, if we go to, let me just uncheck that. Uncheck that. And if we go to our objects here, now we can show the images that we imported using the scene setup. We're going to go to display here and then change our background, or our source image, to plate. We can now go to objects to show our objects here. Object 0, object 1, object 2, object 3 here, object 4, and object 5. You see the amount of time we saved instead of bringing all these objects to all the placeholders. We didn't do that anymore. Instead, that template did it for us. Now we're going to go back to animate our cloud. Let's go to cloud animate. Animation. So we select the animation UI here. Enable animation. Go to dynamics. We're going to animate our X motion. So we go to the timeline zero. We can add we can move it um, towards the right and then add keyframe. We can move to about 6 seconds right about here and press N to trim. They were going to move this or add like negative in front of that value here. Okay, so what we did now we moved to right and then left so if you want to animate it further you can you can really move it like that and you can also move this a bit further okay so we have that here now the next thing we're going to do is to scale that up so we go to transform and scale 
and we can just kill it just like that perfect so we have our cloud now animated we can also animate the position so we go to timeline 0 at keyframe we can bring it down just like that and then we can press K and then we can move it up just like that you can see how far we can go with our cloud look at that so since our cloud or our sky doesn't have cloud elements we're going to use a different cloud for this we're going to go to our template here and we can use our photo template we enable it here and we can now choose maybe like cloud 2 is great that's perfect here you can use that and we can go to enhance cloud you can enable enhancer here then we can increase the highlights or the brightness so it blends like that okay we can now preview our animation before that we can go back to animation here I will show you something dynamics you can see here depth smoothness we can bring that down to 5 to add more depth to our cloud look at that moving in 3d you can also go to depth dimension here and you can warp it some more just like that now we can preview our cloud let me show you looking great our cloud is ready look at that so with motion verse you can animate photorealistic cloud you can control the amount of depth So if you want, you can still turn down the depth amount. It is maybe like 10 here. And then we have our cloud looking great. So now that we are done with cloud, we can go to our additional um, display here. We can hide our foreground guide photo. We can close our cloud. Here. we can now go to our vista select our animator button here so we go to cloud animated cloud then we go to display we can now choose here extract front perfect we can just minimize this UI here so you can see what we're doing so our vista template is now complete we cannot go to editor to project um, the scene here. We select our animator here. So we go to display scene selection. We can now select vista. The next thing we're going to do now is to project the scene. So I'm going to go to fast render here. And I'm going to hide objects. Just for the meantime. And I will go to my grid here. Open the panel make the grid visible we're going to use fast preview then we go to the setup here go to rotate and we're going to move it down a bit here we're going to go to position and we're going to move it up so we're going to use a horizontal here we're going to bring it up just like that and then we're going to go to scale we're going to scale the uh, the height down something like that then we can increase the rotation 
and we can bring it down something like that and then we can scale it out great I'm just going to move this a bit up so we're going to go here okay great so we have the sky from this line here to be the top so it's looking great now we're done with our projector we can now hide first preview and also hide our grid we can now proceed to animate the camera so we go to animator here and we're going to go to display our scene selection here we go to faster render then we can uncheck hide objects so for this tutorial I'm not going to use particles here I'm not going to use object lights here I'm only going to use FS bank and filter so I'm going to leave that unchecked and then I'm going to boost performance you can also reduce resolution so this will increase the speed of your computer now we can go to animation here we go to animate camera we have our zoom lens here so we can start from timeline here zero and we can go to about six seconds here something like that and you can press n we can now go to the beginning of our timeline and we can add keyframe for the zoom lens camera pan and tilt and tripod and we can go to the end we can animate just about that this is great and now we can animate our camera pan and tilt looking great and then we can to create some parallax here and to go back a bit perfect let's move it to the right here perfect and if you want to add um, like to rotate the gimbal you can do that here add keyframe you can rotate that and then we we'll go to the beginning we set it back to zero so we have now animated our scene here it is looking great so you can go to depth map let me show you to see the difference you can enable depth map here look at that you can go to selection and there you can choose look at without a depth map with a depth map so you can start from here and you can also go to refine map here you can change reduce distortion you can increase that to reduce the intensity of the depth map so I'm just going to maybe put like one here instead of reduce let me intensify the result here so look at that looking great okay looking great here now we can animate our objects we can maximize UI and if you want to use puppet pin to to animate your objects like the legs the hands and other parts of the body you can do that now so this object here is object 3 so that is 
one, two, three here. I'm going to open it and I'm going to unlock this layer here. Then I'm going to add the puppet pin. I'm going to add one here. I'm going to add one there. And the waist here. Around the arm. Somewhere there. Somewhere there around the back of the neck. And then the stomach here. And I'm going to move to 6 seconds. I'm going to press N and I will animate the object now. So I'm going to move that like that. Great. I'm going to move this one like that. Great. I'm going to move the arm closer there and this one. I'm going to submit the head. And then this time up here to go in the beat. Perfect, so our object has been animated now so you can use this technique to animate other objects like birds the wings and other things we cannot go back to our editor cam the next thing is to is to move these 3d objects here so i'm going to go to animator i'm going to open properties for the objects and then i'm going to animate the air balance so I'll go to 3d transform here we're going to animate the position so I'm going to add keyframe here and I'm also going to add keyframe for scale so I'm going to uh, scale it down Something like that and I'm going to go to press K to the last keyframe and I'm going to move it back to 100 and I will bring it down and I'm going to move it like that okay and we can do the same for this air balloon here so we go to the next object, go to our 3D transform, add keyframe to X and Y positions, and add keyframe on scale. And we can scale it down, something like that. We can press K and scale it back to 100. And we can move towards that direction. My right side and bring it down like this so looking great the next step now is to simulate depth of field for the camera so we're going to close our object properties go to animation you can minimize UI go to depth of field you'll find quick depth of field and pro so pro is the one that comes with the camera in after effects and quick is the one that we created which is being powered by expressions it's more faster and more accurate so with these two engines you'll be able to create realistic depth of field for the animation so i'm going to activate quick depth of field here i want the camera to focus on the plants first so i'm going to move it towards the right to about 30 I'm going to add keyframe from the beginning here and I'll press K and I'm going to bring it down to 
something like zero. Or maybe I can just disable that, go back to 30. Add keyframe, move to let's say about two seconds here, set it to zero. Then I'm going to move again to something like this. I'm going to double click the panel here, press E and U. So this is the line for my depth of field. I'm going to add a keyframe here. And I'm going to move here and I will change it add like 10 perfect we can ram preview this looking great look at that you can see what the depth of map is doing here and also there. Amazing what you can create using Motionverse, how you can bring your photos to life. And the best part is, Motionverse contains VFX generators. That means you can create cinematic experience using just any photo. Now we're going to add sun and flare here. So we're going to maximize UI. And we're going to select FX Bank. We're going to add sun. So I'm going to enable sun. You have 2D sun and you have 3D sun. So this sun was created actually with After Effects. So if you choose 3D Sun, it's going to have some animation of its own. So for this tutorial, I'm going to use just 2D Sun. And I'm going to move the Sun to the left because that's where the Sun is coming from. Based on this photo. So we can go to our position for our Sun here we're going to move it to the left. Oh, that's too much, so we're going to bring that back. Okay, great. And I'm going to uh, get that 100%. The next thing now is to rotate our sun. We're going to rotate. So that our flare will be facing the this object. Something like that. Then you can go to Sun Flare, you can choose. There are many options here. So let's find something that is suitable for this photo. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to animate my sun. So I'm going to go to timeline zero here. And I'm going to copy this. I'm going to just move it down here. Add keyframe. Go to the last. And I'm going to move it back up. So I'm going to paste that number back. Perfect. Now the next thing we're going to do is to add fog. So we go to fog here, enable fog. And we can bring our fog to front. And if you want it to cover the entire photo, you can use field here. It's daytime, so it looks great. 
Now I'm going to change the color to something um, like that. Looks great. And I'm going to reduce the intensity of the fog just like that. And you can increase it of course if you want to like that it's so I'm going to just reduce that for this photo here looking great now we can go back to our animator here and it's looking amazing what if you want to add text animated text Inside Motionverse, you will find 22 animated tags as of version 1. So you can go to FX Bank. You can add more elements and VFX features to the animation using our FX Bank. So here you have our typography which we are going to use now. I'm going to double click that. And I'm going to select this UI here. And I'm going to enable our scene. Here you can choose different kinds of animations. You can go to text selection here and you can choose. And if you want to control the duration of the animation, you can just move the slider. It is that simple. So in the selection, we have here one, so I'm going to select one here and I'm going to move my duration. So it's going to animate just about this time. After the marker, it disappears. See how easy that is to use. So when you are happy, the kind of uh, animation you want to use. You can check the number here. This one is 11. You can then go to 11 here. Double click and you can animate the text by animating this. And the best part for this typography, it is modular. You can change anything using these settings here and the animation stays. So I'm going to show you how to use this in a different tutorial. For now, I'm going to use 11 just to show you something here. If I want to use tracker, I want to place it on an object, I can use tracker. But for this tutorial, I won't be using the tracker. Now that we are happy with the selection that we have, we can then go back to editor, come, and we're going to find our text here. So you can choose if you want the text to be at the back or front. So no tracker, I can put front, no tracker here. And you will see it in the front. It is that easy to use. And you will see it animate here. So I'm going to hide it for now. And go back to our editor comp here. We can now go ahead to render our scene. With this one hour end that we spent together in this tutorial, it is still not enough to show you everything about Motionverse. It is so massive and took years to develop. With this fundamental tutorial, you can now use Motionverse. You can see how easy it is to use by just moving sliders and checkboxes. It is a powerful product, professional, but yet very easy to use, both for beginners and professionals alike. Now I'm going to show you how to render this animation. Go back to scenery. 
and double click export. You will find here render gallery. You have the 4K resolution render and order sizes here. You have the one for vertical here. You have the one for social media here, the square. And you have the widescreen here for your cinema. And you have this one for Instagram. So you can choose which of these sizes you want to render out. Let me show you something else here. You can select this button here. And you can adjust the position for all these other aspect ratios here. Awesome. If you use the underwater or trail and you want to export it directly from that comp without using our editor here for projection, you can just select underwater or trail and then export. So I'm going to go back to main export here and I'm going to export out 720p. Now very important. You need to go back to editor here. Make sure that you know where your last keyframe is. And then go back to render for 720 and press N. It is that 6 seconds duration here. Make sure that you trim your animation before you start to export. So here in export, you can now select the area in the timeline for the last keyframe and press N. You can go to composition. You can add to media encoder or add to render queue. You can then choose the format you want to render out. My advice is to render out as AVI or QuickTime. And then you can convert that using Premiere Pro. This will give you high quality result with also small file size. Press OK. And you can choose the location for the render. And you can then go ahead and press the render button. Let's check out the result looking great i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you have any question feel free to message us via our customer support page we'll be waiting you take care